Other micro? Yeah. Uh, okay. Got that place. Let's do the contact here. Um, yeah, I'll get to teach you guys about an electric powertrain. Um, I guess let me, I didn't tell you my history. So I, uh, I did these in college. Uh, actually, I was really lucky. I started doing this in high school when someone older than me built one. Uh, that was before EV Grand Prix even started in 2010. And then when I went to college, I was lucky that EV Grand Prix had just started and I got to learn from these guys that had already built. So uh, they taught me everything about EVs. And then one day, I think I was a junior on campus, I heard uh, Tesla, a Tesla employee was on campus. And I went and found him and I said, ooh, look at, go look, come look at my carts. <laughs> and I took him to the lab. I showed him uh, our battery that we've made, our carts that we've assembled. Uh, and he offered me an internship. So through EV Grand Prix, I actually got to go out to Palo Alto and uh, work at Tesla Motors uh, for a summer. That was pretty neat. Uh, I actually got to work in the powertrain division. So uh, I was doing the controls and the powertrain of the actual Tesla. So um, that was pretty neat. Uh, and I'll tell you about the classic powertrain components of an electric vehicle. So first, your energy is going to be in your batteries. Uh, this cart is lead, obviously. Uh, lithium is, uh, is what college use and uh, most EVs use now. Uh, but <laughs> lithium is a pain. Uh, it's very sensitive, and it, it, if you don't treat it right, it will uh, it'll be mean to you. <laughs> we, uh, uh, so when you do lithium, the cells are obviously a little more expensive, but what the cells give you is they are lighter than lead, and they uh, have more power, so they have more ability to give out their charge. Uh, so you can have more energy on your cart for less weight, and you can reach higher currents. That's why you use lithium. But now here's the downsides of lith lithium. Uh, a, like I said, is more expensive. B, um, you have to have a battery management system because each little cell has to be monitored. These 12 volt lead acid batteries actually have six cells in them, if you didn't know that. But they're like 1.2 whatever volts. Uh, these lithium batteries are all more on the cell level. So you say 20S, which is 20 series cells, which is, give me a lot of information here, which that, that would be a 72 volt system. So you have 20 series cells and you have to monitor all these and you have to do that with a thousand dollar battery management system. And if any one of these cells all of a sudden gets too hot or gets too low a voltage, you have to shut the entire battery back down. So that's why lithium is a little more expensive, a little more difficult to do. And doing lead with uh, high school, I, I, it's been amazing. It's so simple. It, um, you know, if you accidentally touch something to the wrong place, not going to be too big of a deal. Uh, a lot safer and a lot more affordable to get into. Uh, the only thing, if you guys wanted to race in the collegiate race, if you want to race in the collegiate race, uh, we do about twice as many laps as you guys. So you guys would probably need twice as many batteries, and now you're getting up to like 180 pounds of lead on your cart. So you can't, it's, that's where you kind of get the downside of lead. But did you guys learn everything you wanted about batteries? Just kidding. Um, all right, so from the battery, uh, let's do the contactor. The purpose of a contactor, uh, does anyone know what a relay is? So a relay is kind of like a switch for your lights, right? But your lights, you actually move the switch. So you're physically turning it on. What this does, this does that exact same thing, but it does it with an electrical signal. So uh, it turns on and off the battery pack's connection to the motor. So it isolates the battery pack, right? So if this thing is open or deactivates, it, it, there's literally a bar in here that falls and the battery pack is no longer connected to anything. So that's why this, these are on every EV. Sometimes there's two. Uh, usually there's two. Um, and it can isolate the battery pack when anything's bad. It also isolates the battery pack when uh, it's off. All right, so you don't have a hot cart. That's what we call a hot cart, is if your battery's connected to the system. Um, so this guy, pretty important. Uh, what, I'll get to it, well, I'll say it right now. So this guy, like I said, is what connects the battery to your system. And the way that it does that is through these wires. So if this guy gets 48 volts through it, this is the coil, whatever, but uh, if it gets 48 volts through it, it'll push that bar up and connect the battery. So this is the turn on, but it's the turn on within the system. Physically, what you're gonna do, and I'll, I'll talk more about this later, is you're gonna take these two wires and run them throughout your cart. I kind of personally call it the safety circuit. Uh, you could call it the turn on circuit. It's kind of one and the same, because what it does is it runs up through here and you've got your one or one or two I think you guys may have one switches the on switch for your cart uh, will be right here so it runs up through here goes through the on switch it'll run through the back go through the the emergency push button off 
switch. It'll come back. I don't know. I can't. Remember. It may go through something else right now. I can't really remember. Prize or for right? Yeah, it goes, but not in this situation. Um, yeah, yeah. So then it goes to the controller, and the, that way the controller can uh, have the final say whether the contact is on or off. So if any of the three systems in series, the mm -hmm. switch right here, I guess you can consider that emergency on off. Uh, the switch right here, uh, the emergency e stop on back, and then the, the motor controller. If any of those ever open or deactivate or turn off, basically break connection, then this guy will no longer have 48 volts across it and you'll isolate your battery back. So that, I'll keep referring to that. Actually, I'm gonna pull up the schematic while we're talking. Uh, okay, so in this situation, uh, it's just the E stop in series. The key switch actually goes to the key switch ability of the controller. So the circuit I just referenced says coil and coil, because this motor controller actually controls the contactor, the coil of the contactor. So it starts the 48 volts, it'll go through here, and then it'll go through the emergency E stop, so if the emergency e-stop is hit and deactivated, then it'll stop right there. If not, if it's good to go, then it'll keep going, and then it'll reach the contactor, and then close the circuit by going back to coil minus. So that's how your contactor system is on this. Um, what I was referencing earlier with your switch right here, this is how your system is, now that I'm looking at it, is this is actually a key. So KSI right here stands for key switch ignition. And so your, uh, let's scroll down a little bit. So your, Key switches right here, and looks like they have emergency e stops. So kind of complicated, but if you break this circuit either as well, then you'll also tell your motor controller to turn off the contactor. So this is also considered a safety circuit. So you've got your key switch, uh, then you also got your steering wheel e stop. I think one of those is optional. You may only have one. Uh, it does the same thing, obviously, because they're right next to each other. But here's your top of your battery pack. So 48 volts runs through here. Always, always have a fuse on the highest part of a system, right? So when I say highest part, you've got the plus of your battery, the most plus part of your, of your 48 volt system, the, where the actual 48 volts are, which I think is this guy. And then always have your fuse be the first one. In this situation, it's a uh, high current fuse. Um, it's a high cur current Slow, I, slow blow is what they call it, just because if you get over 250 right away, it doesn't go. You have to be 250 continuous. Um, this is your fuse, 250 amp uh, on your on your cart. This is the container, so we'll mount this somewhere, but its location will be right here. And then, so you're, if you were high current, you would continue through this path through the contactor. But what we're talking about here is low current, still 48 volts, and it goes this way, still 48 volts. It's just so it's a small wire, low current and it goes to your key switch, and if that switch is open, you're not gonna get any voltage here. So as soon as you turn your card on, you're gonna close this, and then your 48 volts is gonna pass through here, touch your key switch ignition, and that's gonna tell your motor controller, hey, he wants to turn this card on. So then what the motor controller will do is apply the 48 volts to the coil. Your e-stop will not be pressed, so it'll pass through here, and then your contactor, Right here, the bar in it will literally be pushed up and close the circuit. And like I said, remember how I said the high current, if you were high current, you would pass through here? Well, the next thing for the high current is the contactor. So if the contactor bar is not, is not closed, not activated, then this wouldn't allow anything through. So you need this guy to go through here, touch the motor controller. The motor controller needs to say, we're all good, okay. Uh, and then apply the voltage to the coil, which is activating the contactor, go through your e-stop, that's fine, you have, it's not pressed. A lot of issues, you won't realize this is pressed and you're wondering why your car's not turning on, it's because your e-stop's pressed. So then come back here, and then this, like I said, this will activate and close the contactor, which will allow the current to flow, and boom, you've got high current, 48 volts to your motor controller, which means you're ready to apply it to the motor, which is right here. Um, any questions about that? I kind of just give you a little lesson on how a powertrain works. Did you understand that a little bit? Sweet, all right. Cool, um, so now that you know how it works, I guess we can kind of start doing it. Oh, let me, I guess, talk about more things. The other big item is your uh, throttle, uh, potentiometer, pot box, all the same thing. Uh, it's this guy right here, you see Rich? 
Um, so that on the diagram is located right here. And uh, so I won't explain how it works, but basically it touches these two, uh, throttle one and throttle two. Make sure, I think you gotta have the right cords connected, it's color, but if you get it wrong, just do the opposite. Um, and boom, so once you get that connected, that's how your throttle connects. Pretty simple system. You'll see when I'm pointing to these guys right here, you'll see that right here. Um, and actually it's labeled, you can see. So coils, oh, it's a nice diagram. You actually screwed it up, that's awesome. Coils, uh, half speed, which you're not gonna use, throttle, throttle, and key on, which is your KSI. Uh, yeah, we talk about pre-charge resistor. So a pre-charge resistor goes across the contactor. Um, you'll, if you go through the components diagram that comes with your wiring harness kit or see it online, you'll know what each one of these items are in the wiring harness kit. Like I said, this is a pre-charge resistor. It's a higher current resistor, um, probably a few watts. Uh, but you install it across the high current. Oh, let me show you here. So this is the contactor. Like I said, these are the coils. Your contactor may look a little different, but the low, the smaller uh, terminals coming out or the smaller wires coming out, they're obviously your coil. The large terminals is your high current. Uh, they are usually directional, so you'll see a plus <clears throat> and a minus. Uh, I don't, I mean, honestly, I think you could hook it up backwards, but you know why it's directional? No, I mean, yeah. it's just a switch. <laughs> it's just a switch, yeah. <laughs> I used to have a contactor that was open. You could see the bar move. It's pretty cool. but. Um, so the plus side will be right here, the minus side will be right here, obviously, because like I said, your plus starts right here with the red, the hot side. Um, so you put your pre-charge resistor across the large terminals. Does anyone want to know why? Anyone? Yeah, so it's, it's a pre-charge, so let's say, how do I say this? If you just close that bar really quickly, it would just allow uh, technically, in, in, instantaneous, it would allow infinite current to come across, so it'll spark. Uh, and if it sparks, you could weld your bar to these terminals. Like I said, a bar comes up and touches these two terminals to close them, and if there's no pre-charge resistor, it, it'll all of a sudden be 48 volts to zero volts, and it'll just spark, and that bar can weld to the terminals. And I remember a few times you actually have to take a hammer and literally hammer the, the contactor in order to get that bar unwelded. Uh, so what the pre-charge resistor does is it won't allow any large current to flow across it. Uh, so in that sense, the contactor is still effective because no large current can flow across it. Uh, but what it does do is allow 48 volts to go to the other side. So when you close the bar, it goes 48 volts to 48 volts. In case you were curious, that's a little more advanced.